everybody. Welcome to Tuesday Night, The Word Works. I'm Jessica Heilman. And I'm Jeff Heilman. Good evening. And we're going to share with you nine minutes of words of wisdom, picking from the treasure chest of topics. We don't know what we're about to talk about, but the Lord does, and so he's going to lead us. And let's get right to it. You want to pick this week, honey? Sure. What's it going to be? What's it going to be? What are we going to talk about? Words of wisdom. Oh. Wisdom! Proverbs 31 13. Um, Proverbs, that one? Proverbs 31 13, and it's interesting because I just wrote on this the other night. It's actually pertaining to wisdom in the area of finances. What it talks about is it talks about um, the wise person who will. Um, we can read it if you want to read it. While I pick it up, why don't you share some financial wisdom nuggets that you've learned in the last. <laughs> 13 years. <laughs> well, do's or don'ts, whatever comes to your mind yeah, first. Yeah, it's do's, it's do's, not don'ts, right? Um, financial wisdom. I would say that if you don't have a high income, then take the pressure off yourself to worry about investing. In order to invest, you need to have income to invest. And some people would say, you know, if you can't live on two grand, you can't live on 20 grand a month. Uh, I, I think there's a balance there. And I think a lot of times people making two grand or three grand a month and their burn rate is at, at twenty seven fifty. Uh, you know, might be stressed out about the fact they're not saving. And when you can look at really the best investment that you can make is in your own personal development. And that's why we do these videos. That's why we read the books that we read and have the CDs. And, and I remember you telling me the revelation that you had a few months ago that if you don't have the money to necessarily invest in um, other things right away to not be concerned with investing in yourself that you really are your very best yeah. investment i remember That's a long best, time best learning investment. a long time learning somebody said if you don't if you got messed up teeth and you want to invest in anything have your first investment be to get braces and get your teeth yeah, fixed yeah the best thing you can do is get your teeth <laughs> best fixed. thing you can do is get I, your teeth fixed i agree with that hawk <laughs> hawk whatever you got to hawk <laughs> I was an adult with braces. I was an adult braces were. So the scripture is 31, uh, Proverbs 31, 13, and it is, she seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. And so tonight's topic about financial wisdom is obviously in the scripture, this person, the, the wise person, looks not for the easiest, most um the quickest resolve for how to spend their finances, but actually prioritizes the spending so that they can get the most value for what they're spending and they're not afraid to work with their hands in order to make it become manifest into exactly what they need. And um, case an example would be going to the grocery store and I know when I make out my grocery list, I kind of make a pre-grocery list of, um, you know, I just kind of randomly put a lot of stuff down and then a lot of times I'll do a second grocery list where I can can I does this thing that's on my list is this processed is there any way that I can refine the process to get the ingredients to do it instead of just like cake mix if I put cake mix on my list to make a birthday cake you know financially do can I can I afford cake mix of course I probably could afford cake mix but maybe I want to make the cake from scratch and what would I need in order to make the cake from scratch instead so the whole theory the whole thinking behind Proverbs thirty one thirteen is just what can we do that doesn't have to be done for us and if we can just keep that in mind when we're spending money is like is this something that somebody else is doing for me or is this something that I can do for myself that's what I got out of it yeah. Case in point, our lawnmower, instead of going and buying it, going on Craigslist and spending $100 to buy a new lawnmower, we went and took it to the repair shop and it took longer to get it fixed, but we used what we had, which is kind of the ultimate in recycling, is just, you know, fixing what you have instead of running out and going and buying something brand new. And I, just personally, I just cannot stand waste. It just bothers me. And I don't know why. I don't know if it's because of the fact that, that in engineering, uh, in software engineering, which I've been involved in on the sales side for as long as I have been, waste is just something that we try really hard to avoid. Um, but I just don't like wasting things. I don't like wasting clothes. I don't like wasting consumables. I don't like wasting electricity. Um, just because there's no reason to waste it. It's it's something that it's a resource that you can be used or reallocated for some other purpose, and it costs money to do it. And so we just try to run things as efficiently as we can. 
There is, however, uh, as I was talking about earlier, you'll get to a point where you've optimized your budget as much as you can. You've you've scrimped, you've saved, you've cut the extra cell phone, you've cut the cable, you've sold the TV, you've had a garage sale, and if you're still just barely making it, then then you know it's okay to look and say, you know, we just don't make enough. We need to make more money than we're making right now in order to have the extra money to invest or the extra money to have better coverage or insurance or to put into uh, projects or, or investing in yourself. And so we just really encourage people to understand that the best investment that you can make is in your own personal development and in your own thinking process. And sometimes investing money isn't what it takes. Sometimes it's the time spent on a Saturday afternoon with a yellow pad writing down all the things that you'd like to accomplish in your life and, and then be able to take two or three of those things and put them on a uh, one year or a two year list of goals and then to be able to break those down into projects and break those projects down into reasonable action items that can be done in 15 or 20 minutes a piece and you know, a lot of times that's an investment that we'll make in ourselves to sit down uh, over a cup of coffee which is a dollar, a dollar and a half and we'll have Jeffrey watch the kids and we'll go spend two hours or three hours looking at, at uh, planning out a project that we need to get done and, and I think that's it's worth it to take the time and effort to invest that in yourself as well because it'll provide clarity on things that you can do as you've got time and resources to do it and it doesn't cost any money at all. Um, I, have a, I have my computer over here with the book that I'm working on and so there's a few questions that I put together in the book that talks about um, prioritizing your spending and asking yourself if you that you should ask these questions of yourself as you're finding out what it is you should be spending your money on. The first question is where has all my money been going and where do I want my money to go? That's something important to consider. And how much is my take-home pay exactly? Before, you know, after your taxes, after your tithe, what do I get to keep? What things do I know I have to pay for this month? That's really important to me. I like to make sure that um, I have all the bills, the electricity, and all these the bills that are standards that you know you're going to have yep. to pay every month. You need to know what those things are when you're prioritizing your spending. Yeah. You always um, allocate for the bills, you know you're gonna the bills that you first. know that you're going to pay for. You can look and see online the trend for how much you've spent. Um, what does the calendar of events look like for this month? Has God indicated that you needed to go on a trip, or is there some occasion that will cost you some extra money? And um, the last question, and these questions are even in priority, is um, what do I need to buy? Who do I need to buy for other than myself? So again, in order, it was the first. The first one is where has all my money been going? You need to you need to write down. I suggest that you take a week and you write down in your notebook every single transaction that you make and find out exactly where your money is going. You'll be probably shocked to find out where all your money is going and how much money that you can allocate to another area. And then the second question was how much is my take on pay exactly? You need to know that. You need to if you're on straight commission, you probably have a general idea of how much it is, but really take the time to sit down and look at your stubs and find out how much you're making per month. Where what do I have to pay for? What are my bills? And what is the calendar of events per month? So we we like to set up each each time that we get paid or a large a large amount or even just our weekly or biweekly amounts um, as projects. And if you can until you have a project of a year of project of financial spending, you know, take each paycheck if you have to, take each month if you have to as a certain project. What am I spending my money on this month? And what we're trying to do is, and what I write about in the book is, what we want to do is we don't want to have to avoid unexpected expenses. We want to assume that they're going to come, and we want to be prepared and be preventative in the front side so that we yeah. and proactive so we don't have to go out and get that. So that was nine minutes, guys. Thanks. We love you, and maybe we'll talk more about financial wisdom next week. That Thanks. was a lot of fun. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. Bye.